Building integrity, building Ford. I'm Brian Moore, and this is Focus NNS. We're here in Grand Rapids, Michigan at the Gerald R. Ford Presidential Museum. CVN 78, the aircraft carrier named after President Ford, continues to be a big point of interest here. We'll have the latest on what's happening. Plus, the Apprentice School football team comes home with a new title. We'll tell you about the NCFA Championship. Also, they are the true masters of their craft. We'll take you to the Master Shipbuilder Ceremony. And it's that time of year, time to look back. We'll have the biggest stories of 2018 voted on by you. Those stories and more are coming up, but first on deck, the Gerald R. Ford Museum continues President Ford's legacy with writings and exhibits and displays. And part of that legacy is the aircraft carrier Gerald R. Ford CVN 78 built by Newport News Shipbuilding. The documentary Building Integrity, Building Ford has a very special showing here at the museum. And Aaron Pritchett with our communications division joins us from inside the museum with details. It's an exciting opportunity to hit the road and take the message to the people. And that's exactly what this trip to beautiful Grand Rapids, Michigan is all about, as Newport News Shipbuilding takes part in helping to educate, inspire, and share with young and old alike all that it takes to build the largest, most powerful ship in the naval fleet, the aircraft carrier. It's always exciting when you can come out of your normal element, such as leave the shipyard, come to Michigan, and represent the 23,000 people that work at the shipyard every day. An important mission and one that is often overlooked in the business of shipbuilding. Taking the message, the pride, and the responsibility of building an aircraft carrier on the road. And in this case, over 800 miles away to the people of Grand Rapids, Michigan. The people here are just incredibly supportive of President Ford, of his legacy, of the ship itself, of the shipbuilders. They understand it, they understand what we do, and they turn out. It was a busy morning and a busy day. From live local TV appearances. I'm here this morning with Jeff Hummel. He is with the so it's not a tour, it's a day. Uh, we were up at the normal shipyard time. We were on TV at about 5.30 this morning and uh, did a couple TV interviews. And it's nice to be in, in Michigan, you know, working on an aircraft carrier is a challenge and, and uh, a satisfying job at, at all times. but. Uh, being back in Michigan to represent uh, building carriers, the, the carrier that was built for Gerald R. Ford, just adds a little bit extra uh, satisfaction. Your Christmas music station, 100.5 The River. To in-studio radio interviews. So the documentary tonight, for example, it, it carries you from you know cradle to grave, from the first design all the way through the build, through the delivery to the Navy. And even an in-depth presentation to the students at the West Michigan Aviation Academy. Newport News Shipbuilding was in the spotlight. So the school we visited today, there a lot of the students end up with a pilot's license when they graduate. Uh, about 60 or 70 of them have a pilot's license. So who knows, uh, maybe someday one of those uh, pilots will be landing on an aircraft carrier. And that would be great if, if Lucas and I had the opportunity to uh, put that desire into them and that spark out, it's, it's, it's a great contribution. It's really interesting for us to kind of see like the behind the scenes with it because it's really a whole, it takes years. It's, it's a long process and it's really nice to kind of give credit to the people who are making these things for us. And I mean, they're defending our country. And I think any, any aspect of aviation and engineering and technologies that we can bring to our students today across America is just a huge asset to them because our students just need that exposure. And so it was just a great presentation and and I'm hoping that many of them will uh, come down tonight to the Gerald R. Ford Museum. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a very special evening for me tonight. It's always good to be back in Grand Rapids. The main attraction was the Ford documentary, Building Integrity, Building Ford. To be able to share an event like this with our community, uh, which is so 
interested in their favorite son, Gerald Ford, to bring the builders here, to bring the ship's sponsor here, and to have them uh, be able to ask questions uh, of them, to, uh, for you to share this documentary with them. How many communities get to experience uh, something like this? I wanted to see what was the process involved in, uh, from the design work to the construction, what the site looked like. Um, everything to, you know, when they actually get it floating and, and the time frame, the cost, uh, it was all very interesting. Working on the Gerald R. Ford for me was uh, a little bit special because he was from Michigan and I'm from Michigan. So being able to come back and actually uh, show the, the carrier construction process and the shipbuilders to the Ford Foundation and all our supporters here in Michigan, it's really a, a special occasion. And to see the documentary was unbelievable. It, I really relived all the things that I did, I was like, wow, I really did that, didn't I? So I was pleased for a cold Michigan evening for a great turnout and great questions. This has been a busy day, okay? And it's outside of our comfort zone. We're shipbuilders, okay? We enjoy building ships, okay? This is an important piece of the business, though. Awareness, getting the word out, talking to students, talking to the communities, and very, very important piece of the business. We are proud to be able to showcase our documentary Building Integrity, Building Ford here at the Gerald R. Ford Presidential Museum in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And greater yet, be able to spread the word about all the great work our shipbuilders are doing back home in Newport News, Virginia. For Focus in S, I'm Aaron Pritchett. Back to you, Brian. All right, Aaron, thanks so much for that. And we'll have a little bit more about the aircraft carrier display here at the Gerald R. Ford Museum a little bit later. But first, let's take a look at some other news from around the yard. A big congratulations to the Apprentice School football team on a spectacular season and a national championship. The builders were sent off to the game with a rousing pep rally as they left for Wheeling, West Virginia, where the game was played on December 1st. The team was led to victory over Oakland University by quarterback Terrence Sudbury, who was also named the game MVP. First off, when, when I seen the, uh, the schedule and then you see that, that national championship at the end of it, it's like, okay, you get a different type of energy to you. So it was, I it wanted it from the jump and I, being a part of a leader on the team, it just made me want to, it was like, I, it's all or nothing. Basically, I just had to let the guys know that that's what we hear we got to go to accomplish and we got to do it one game at a time. Final score 56 to 14 and the Apprentice School football team secures the National Club Football Association NCFA National Championship. Great job. You are our shipbuilding all-stars. Speaking of great jobs, more than 1,000 Newport News shipbuilders are honored at the 2018 Master Shipbuilder Ceremony. The event was held in December and recognizes shipbuilders with more than 40 years of continuous service. This year, 144 new master shipbuilders were honored who came on board in 1978. I've seen so much here at the shipyard. 40 years of service is it's an honor. I've gained a lot of knowledge in my 40 years and now I'm at a point in my life where I want to pass it on. In all, there is a combined 44,562 years of service. Quite impressive. But not to be outdone, Kessel Ring is honoring employees with more than 30 years of service at the site. The Navy Nuclear Training Site in Boston Spa, New York, is part of the Newport News shipbuilding team. They held their first Kessel Ring Site Legacy Builders Dinner on December 11th. It honors those who are committed to ensuring Navy sailors are trained and ready to work on the nuclear submarines built by Newport News Shipbuilding. The bigger picture is um, we're part of the defense of this country and um, love this country. So being part of that and helping the Navy every day, um, being a small piece of that is very rewarding. Leaders from shipyards in Hampton Roads met to discuss workforce demand. The America Builds and Repairs Great Ships Conference launched in Portsmouth in November and stressed the importance of hiring skilled workers such as welders, electricians, and pipe fitters to help grow the business base. The goal is to work as a team to meet the goals of the U.S. Navy. There's a demand signal for the Navy to get to 355 ships or get to some number greater than current is. And to do that, it's going to take us to build, not just build new ships, 
but to also modernize and maintain the ships we have. Meeting a growing Navy demand for new ships and to maintain the current fleet will require a healthy industrial base, and Newport News Shipbuilding is developing plans to attract, recruit, hire, and train the next generation of skilled workers. Shipbuilders are making a difference in the community. A group from the shipyard's Information Technology Division is recycling computers that are no longer used at the shipyard by giving them to local boys and girls clubs. Lena Wallace with our Communications Division has the details on how technology is making a difference. High above the southeast section of Newport News, shipbuilders and suppliers are here at the Boys and Girls Club giving it a makeover. They're donating computers to help kids who don't have access to technology. From the hands of shipbuilders to the hands of children, Newport News Shipbuilding's Information Technology Division is donating refreshed computers to boys and girls clubs. A little over a year ago, the Boys and Girls Club uh, got in contact with us and asked if we could assist with some PC networking equipment. We deployed the Boys and Girls Club's computers was based on PCs that were used throughout the yard when they were refreshed. We brought them back to our building. We wiped them clean of any Newport News information and we put a basic load on those PCs. And that would be like what you would get if you bought a PC personally, so a basic operating system. The new computer labs will help develop the children's relationship with technology. It gives the kids the opportunity to come here and get their homework done to those that have homework they have to do on a computer. They can now keep pace with their peers as they progress through school and professionally. Anytime that you give technology to young people, they, they do great things and realize that this is going to be our next generation of shipbuilders. I mean, th that's exciting. I'd like to thank the shipyard for the outstanding support of the Boys and Girls Club and our organization. And I'm pretty sure all the kids love the computers that they have donated. A thank you for helping develop the future workforce. Shipbuilders hope to create more computer labs at more boys and girls clubs on the greater peninsula. For Focus NNS, I'm Lena Wallace. Back to you, Brian. All right, a great program there. Thank you so much, Lena. Well, 2018 is quickly coming to a close, but before we look ahead to 2019, let's take a look back at some of the biggest stories of 2018 voted on by you, our Newport News shipbuilders. Being a shipbuilder, everybody touches a part of it. Everybody has their hands in it. There's so much that goes into it. And our ultimate goal is to get this ship finished completion, get it built, and get it delivered to the Navy. With everybody's hard work, that's, that's our main focus. And number four. I think parking is hard on both sides. I think parking is hard every morning for and every afternoon when people try to come to work. It's not an easy problem to solve. We have a lot of people down here. We're going to have a lot more people down here, but it's something I know that they're working on. Number three. Safety means to me that I get to go home to my family and safety is a way of life. It's a mindset, it's a, it's a need. Number two. I really think it will change how shipbuilding is done. I mean, to be able to have a part um, when you need it. Keep using the word exciting only because this is exciting. This is definitely gonna be a paradigm shift in how we do things. Number one! It's hard stuff done right. Uh, it's a complicated project, a lot of uh, logistics involved. It impacted the whole yard uh, immensely, I think, and I worked with a great group of people, and I'm proud and honored to have changed the skyline of Newport News. Uh, first project like this in 40 years, uh, and uh, you can see it from a long ways away.
quite a year at Newport News Shipbuilding, and we will be back next year with more of Focus NNS. Well, as we mentioned at the top of the show, we are here at the Gerald R. Ford Presidential Museum in Grand Rapids, Michigan. One of the exhibits here at the museum is about the carrier named for President Ford. It showcases a huge wall photo from CVN 78's christening ceremony held on November 9, 2013. But the big feature is the scale model of the USS Gerald R. Ford. It showcases all the new technology, the new island, and the shipbuilders of Newport News Shipbuilding. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Focus NNS from the Gerald R. Ford Presidential Museum in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Remember, don't miss out on timely and important information. Download our free app, nns to go It's available in the Google and Apple stores on your smartphones and tablets. And don't forget to check out the latest news in our weekly publication, Currents. And remember, Focus NNS is available on numerous stations and city channels across the state of Virginia. Stations like NNTV in Newport News, Virginia, and PCTV in Portsmouth, Virginia. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Brian Moore.